How are you? Good, how are you? No complaints. I um, just absolutely love that scene out at practice yesterday with the, the, the players around. Like, yeah. They seemed like they were having a lot of fun. I'm curious, what was that like from the kick, you know, your perspective with, with all that around you? Yeah, obviously a little bit different than the game scenario. Uh, there's not going to be that many people on the field or else we'd probably get a penalty or something like that. But uh, uh, it's a good ability for us to just kind of hone in to uh, kind of get in our little bubble. Uh, so no matter if there's 100 guys around you at practice or there's no one on, around you on uh, on game day, um, you're still in like kind of the same mentality, same process, um, just going through the same steps that I always do. Um, but it just adds that other layer of kind of uh, mental fortitude for us. So. And how are you feeling you're hitting the ball? Yeah, uh, kind of came in uh, to camp a little, little rusty, uh, just getting back into the process of getting into the operation with Joe and Bryce. And uh, ever since probably third or fourth practice, I've really been getting back into my my uh, routine, um, hitting the ball like I know I should be able to, and um, feel like I'm, I'm making the most out of my opportunity here. So, Just to go back to that drill yesterday, had you ever had a drill like that before, done anything like that before in a practice? Yeah, uh, different places I've been, I've done it all the way from college all the way to the NFL. Um, some of them are more public, obviously, like yesterday's practices. So some of them are a little bit more just at a normal day of practice, but... Uh, also, some of the camps that we go to in the off season, um, there's uh, different coaches around the uh, the United States that do different camps and stuff like that. And uh, some of them will have little competitions like that that we do. So um, it's nothing new, um, but obviously di a little bit different for practice. But it's, like I said, fun drill, uh, great opportunity, but um, just kind of helps us to lock into the things that we've already been doing in practice anyway. So regarding the operation, you've been with a number of different long snappers and hold. How, how difficult is it to get acclimated to be a Cody so you get it? What's the key for you? Um, just building the trust, um, knowing kind of the tendencies of both the snapper holder, um, how confident they look, you know, catching the ball, molding a ball, spinning a ball where the, you know, maybe the snapper has a tendency of where they might miss laces, things like that. So you're just kind of getting used to it. And then, um, even just like field conditions, like a little taller grass on this field, a little lower grass on the bottom field. We have turf inside. Uh, different stadiums have different surfaces. So you're just trying to find uh, kind of the consistency with some of those things that you might have uh, some variances of your plant, how you get off your plant, how you're rotating on the turf. So there's just like little nuanced things that you got to get used to. Um, but then um, for me, I'm, I mean, this is year six for me. I've been doing this for a long enough time where uh, it's not a matter of not knowing what to do. It's just a matter of getting back on the bike and, you know, getting back to it. So, when it comes to the operation, is there anything in terms of uh, Bryce Barringer as a holder that maybe differentiates him from guys you work with? Um, not really. Uh, something that I do like about Bryce, and uh, I was able to go golfing with him one time. Um, and he's obviously from the news you can see, he's a pretty good golfer. Uh, so the and I had Tress Way in, in Washington, who's also a really good golfer. And the relationship that we are, you know, building the chemistry that we're building on our operation is kind of like him as my caddy, and I'm the golfer. Um, Figuring out, we, you know, we got a crosswind today. If we were kicking today, you know, trying to figure out, hey, like, what do we want to do with this wind? What spot do you want to play? Um, and it's just a nice little dialogue that if you uh, get the opportunity to hear some of the caddies on the PGA Tour and stuff like that, you'll. I just saw a video recently of Scheffler and his and his caddy talking about, you know, they're at a, uh, I think it was St Andrews or whatever when they were playing links courses and. Scotty had, a, I think, a seven iron in his hand. His, his, he backed off the ball, and his caddy was like, hey, let's move to an eight, or a six iron, and he played the six iron and put it right next to the pin. So just that dialogue that you can have, you have another uh, kind of opinion. Um, and the more and more that we get to work with each other, the more he understands what I'm looking for in my ball and the flight and the you know direction and all those things. And uh, we can just continue to build a relationship like that, trust in, in our operation, and, and get better as we go. So. Say that again? Spring? Spring's a great dude, man. Uh, he's got a lot of energy, uh, which I, is really nice to have around a special teams unit. Um, he allows us to kind of be our own professionals, uh, kind of a laissez-faire, kind of hands-off a little bit, just to say, hey, like, I trust that you're going to get your job done and, and do it at the best of your ability, uh, which is really, really good for us, um, especially, when, you know, specialists that have the ability to kind of self-correct themselves. Um, so it's great having the confidence behind a, a coordinator like that. And then he also has someone like TQ behind him who's a vet uh, special teams coordinator that's been around a lot of good uh, players. Some of obviously the recent ones like Graham Gano up in New York and things like that. Nick Folk even last year when he was in uh, Tennessee. So um, he understands, you know, kind of the, I wouldn't say old regime of special teams coaching, but you kind of got like an old age and a new age guy that kind of gives a really good balance to the group. And uh, it's really, it's, it's a nice kind of operation to, to play under. So it's been really cool.
captured you? Did you work with Shane Brown? Have you done a lot of uh, not work directly with Shane. Um, to be honest with you, his coach growing up uh, was a guy named Coach P. And P and my old coach, Paul Woodside, used to do a lot of work together. So Shane kind of grew up under the, uh, I guess, the umbrella coaching of Paul Woodside a little bit. Um, he was a guy up in Northern Virginia that I worked with when I was coming out of high school. And a guy that I continue to work with, Dan Orner, is another guy that was in that same kind of uh, coaching tree. So uh, a lot of crossover there. Uh, was able to meet Sh Shane when I was at Virginia Tech. Um, have a really good relationship with him. Obviously, he's doing some coaching stuff around the country. So it's it's good to see him kind of be in that role, kind of take on the, the reins of some of the old coaches that he had and try to facilitate that growth for some of the younger kickers coming out. But uh, um, definitely more of just like a personal relationship with him versus a coaching relationship. But uh, he's someone that if I, if I ever really needed some help with or something like that, I can easily reach out to him. Shane's a great guy. So. I know done a lot of work with technology, trying to like, put, like, tracking and... Yeah. Yeah, TrackMan's uh, a new kind of, uh, they've been using it for golf, obviously, for a long time. I think, uh, not to not to put a negative light on the TrackMan stuff, but uh, kicking is pretty results-oriented. Uh, you can hit a really crappy ball, and it goes through. You can hit a really good ball, and you miss. Um, so a TrackMan might, you know, show me my statistics of my rotation and my elevation and my blah, 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 and all these things. If I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. Uh, with golf, a lot of times, obviously, there's a lot more distance. Uh, there's playing the ball. There's playing the shaft of the club, whatever it might be. So spin can take off distance, like your trajectory, all that stuff. Um, so for me personally, getting uh, super entrenched into data like that, it's just not my forte with that. Um, I have enough uh, mental stuff that I'm working on with my, my own um, swing and technique. Uh, but obviously, with some guys that um, might need to work on those things, it's obviously a great uh, resource if, if need be. So. Joey, how would you describe your journey just in the NFL, thinking back to just trying to get your foot in the door, and maybe even like getting some stability there in Washington, I think, for yeah. a few years, and then this year to end up here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, path is uh, definitely a weird one. Uh, it's a different one than uh, some guys, but I think everyone has a weird path. Uh, specialists are going to be, you know, kind of that oddball from every other position just because there's only 32 of our jobs We're for kicking, obviously, specifically, but uh, there's 32 jobs. There's no backups. There's no, like, you know, if you're a quarterback, you might be a backup here, backup here, all of a sudden getting a starting job here. There's three on a roster most of the time. Uh, whatever the situation uh, might be. But for us, it's, I mean, it's really cut and dry. Like you're either one of the 32 or you're not. And you're trying to break through that door. Uh, so um, I've had a lot of weird opportunities in my career. Uh, some of them I've taken advantage of, some of them I haven't. Um, I got in the league with the New York Giants through a rookie minicamp tryout that ended up turning into a quick signing that was a quick cut to another signing for a training camp, then cut again, and then worked out for Carolina. Was there for two years, cut, went to Houston, San Fran, Washington. Two years in Washington, signed to Jacksonville this offseason for like a week here. So, um, I mean, yeah, crazy journey. But uh, what I've just tried to do in my career is really like lock in to me and uh, focusing on how good of a kicker I can be at certain points and continually uh, raising like my potential to hit that all the time when you see me kick. And so um, I'm hoping, to, like I said, to put that on display here and, and show that I should be one of, obviously one of the 32, but I want to be in that category of top five in the league. And I feel like at certain points I've shown that and other points I haven't. And so it's just continually showing that I can be in that in that top top category. So. Well, you you mentioned, Sorry, go ahead. You mentioned there's only 32 jobs. So when you are in a competition like you are right now, how do you handle it? How does it not become awkward? Um, yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, like uh, I, I got to talk to Chad a little bit last year when I was with Washington. We came up here and played, and Chad's a great guy. So um, I don't ever look at a competition based off of the character of the guy that I'm going against. Uh, I think we both understand that we're trying to do our job at the best of our ability and try to you know get to one of those 32 jobs. So it's uh, never. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're competing against someone. There's, like, the awkwardness of just knowing, like, if I make a kick and he misses or if he makes it and I miss, then it's like, ah, like, you know, like, there's that. But uh, I, Chad's a great dude. And so it's uh, cool to be around him in the locker room. It's cool to hang out with him uh, when we get breaks and stuff like that. So um, I'm always rooting for him to do his best. And um, if he's doing his best, I'm doing my best. Then we're, you know, all, all boats will rise in, in, in high, high tide. So... Um, I'm hoping that he does as well as he can, and um, I'm hoping I do as well as I can. We just kind of let things establish themselves as they are. So, it like you had a good day yesterday. How do you feel? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I uh, felt like I had a good day yesterday. I felt like I've been having a good string of weeks here, and um, I'm just looking to continue to do that. Um, just every opportunity I have, I want to take advantage of, and um, I know what I have in myself when I kick. I know how good I can be, um, and essentially it's just going out and doing that every single day and al allowing everyone else around me to see that what I see in myself. So, yeah. How much of a challenge is it to place it within the landing zone? Is that a challenge, or you at the point where you can place it that well? Like, how, how much is your job changing? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, funny on the opposite direction. Obviously, I was a guy that was known to have a strong leg on kickoff, um, like one of the top guys kick kickoff wise for the league for the last couple of years. So, uh, dialing it back a little bit is a little bit of an awkward situation for me. You like kind of grow up your whole entire life kicking of trying to figure out how to put the ball as far as you can, and now you're trying to dial it back. So, uh, I went from being like a long drive champion to like a chip shot artist. So that's kind of where I'm taking it now, and I'm just um, trying to find ways that we can. Either get the ball on the ground uh, to move the returners around or place it in an opportunity to, to allow our coverage team to have the best opportunity to go down there. And um, something that I'm kind of excited for a little bit is uh, I'm now in coverage. Like uh, a lot more times I'm going to be apexing the, re uh, the returner on certain positions. So um, I'm locked in, ready to make tackles if need be. So uh, obviously want our, our coverage unit to go down and tackle them inside the 20 or 15 or wherever they, they may. But... Um, I'm also want to make sure that I'm I'm part of that coverage and taking every opportunity to make sure that uh, I contribute on that as well. So, how does it mirror your golf game? How are you with the irons? Uh, irons. Uh, if I get inside of 100 yards, uh, chalk me up for a double bogey. Um, but if I'm in that like 130 range and I can get like a gap wedge or a pitching wedge in my hand, I'm usually pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean my golf game is. Getting there um, as a specialist, I think you definitely need to have that in your back pocket. So on your off days, you uh, can get away from kicking a little bit. But uh, I'm not helping myself out with the two guys I've been golfing with recently, with Tress and, and Bryce. They're like, I think Tress is like a plus two handicap right now, and Bryce is making pro a professional amateur uh, tryouts and stuff like that. So if I, if Bryce wants to quit football and go golf, I'm pretty sure he's fine with that too. So uh, might just need to pick my competition a little bit better to make myself feel a little bit better on the golf course. So I might need to just keep going golfing with my dad and keep beating him up a little bit. Have you guys played quite a bit together? Uh, went out with Bryce uh, to TPC, which was awesome. Uh, that course is very challenging. And then uh, been able to go out with Tippett, our uh, special teams uh, assistant coordinator. And um, Tip's a pretty good stick, too. So Tip's a little bit more more my competition right now. So, yeah. Have played any other? When Drake, um, on draft night, Drake said that he played with Jacoby. Yeah. And not no, not haven't been able to play with them, but uh, we'll see what happens if we uh, get throughout this season and start getting a little golf crew going together. And uh, I think golf's fun to just kind of build camaraderie around some of your teammates and uh, just have have a good time on, on the course and get away from football a little bit, let the mind go, suck at golf so you can be, feel better about yourself for playing good at football. So, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for taking all the time. Yeah. yeah. We have a group in here. Yeah. When you guys pick at the end, we literally run from here. Over to the end, so we can see. You know, it's hard to see the end. Yeah. So we can get like uh, every every. It's sort of fun. Like we're having fun. Yeah. Watching you do your practice. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, sorry for the uh, the bombs we're hitting into you guys while you guys are trying to. <laughs> the word. Yeah, it just we we need to put a sign up here that says like maybe kicked by kickers. Uh, please like keep keep eyes out. But yes, yeah, so, uh, appreciate you guys. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, we'll thanks guys. One more question if you guys have it. If we not. It's, it's fine, guys. No, it's it's really fun. Yeah, no, you guys are fine. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thank you, guys. Nice to meet you, guys.